Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I've got another MLM2 Pro video for you today. Uh, so real quick, what we're going to be doing is we're going to talk about the, the most recent updates. There's been two kind of come out, uh, one kind of minor release update and then uh, kind of a major one uh, in the last two weeks here. So real quick, I'll throw them up here on the screen. We can take a look at them. As we can kind of see in the first update that just happened about a week or so ago, they just released a minor bug fix to fix the elevation selection uh, inside of the application. Um, but the one that we're going to be demoing today and the one that's the major update is the, the 210.5 app update. That actually brought their new target range. So what we're going to do is we're going to load into basically the target range through the RapSoto app. Do a few different targets, hit a few different shots, kind of look at what it looks like, kind of play around with it, kind of show you around, kind of go over like at the end. We'll do some like pros and cons and maybe where I think they can improve it a little bit. So let's get loaded into the demo. All right, so we're going to get loaded into the RapSoto app real quick, uh, get connected to the MLM2 Pro. Uh, and then we'll go out to the target range. So real quick, we'll connect to the device. All right, so we are connected now. And you'll kind of notice here in your, your main Rapsodo apps page, you have target range at the bottom. So that is the newest one. So we're gonna click into that. Uh, and then you kind of get your, your regular menu before you kind of load into anything here. So we are indoors, so we'll choose net. Uh, we are using the Callaway RPT Chrome Soft X Ball. Uh, unfortunately, even though the announcement was back in February, we're still about four months. Uh, from that announcement and we have yet to see any RPT balls actually made by Titleist. So hopefully that's still in the works. Uh, we will leave it at sea level and then we'll go graphics quality high. All right, so real quick, we'll just kind of go through this menu. Uh, basically, you can see kind of an aerial view on the right of all the different greens, the fairways, the small targets, the tee box and everything. Uh, and then over here in your selection area, you can change your position on the tee box from left, center or right and it also changes your target yardage numbers there. So it kind of gives you a little bit different distances. So that is kind of cool. Um, we'll go back to the center. We'll look at the targets here. So anywhere from 34 yards all the way up to 325 yards. So obviously those longer targets, they're gonna be these greens that are kind of tucked away in the very, very back. And then these smaller targets are gonna be these individual really tiny greens here in the middle for the most part. All right, and then if you don't wanna aim at a flag or a pin, uh, green basically you have a fairway option so now if you want to work on maybe trying to hit fairways you can work on this short one to the left uh, you got this big long one here with water on the left on the left side and then you got the big middle part there uh, with the right one and then short right a little bit longer than short left over here on the right hand side so the first thing we're going to do like i said we're going to kind of go out to a short target we'll just go to this 55 yard uh, small green here and then we'll select lob wedge all right, and then we've got the MLM2 Pro aligned, start session. And then we'll kind of quickly go around kind of everything that you see in your window here. So in the top left, just like you do on the range and everything, you've got your target yardage, and then we've got like the elevation. That's something I don't think that they had in the beta, which I'm glad to see that they, add that, they added that elevation marker before it actually released publicly uh, with this update. And then you've got your typical stuff, your carry, your total proximity, same as like kind of what you would see um, on the range with a target. Uh, and then over here, if we go to the right, you've got your club selection top right corner, and then you've kind of got a mini map that's kind of zoomed in on the target that you have selected. And then if we scroll to the right there, uh, after you hit a bunch of shots, we'll see you know how many we hit target with, what our best shot was, the average proximity of all the shots, and then also the average carry distance of all of those shots. All right, and then everything else, just like on the range, uh, is kind of the same at the bottom. You've got all your metrics there. Uh, you can click over here in the menu, you can change those metrics if you want to, because there are 11 that you can choose from. We'll just go with the default ones. And then the only other added option you kind of have over here on the, on the far bottom left is the flag, and that just brings you back to the selection menu, so you can choose a different target. All right, so we've got our short target selected, 55 yards downhill, six feet. So we're gonna hit just a you know partial lob wedge, and we're gonna hit a few shots real quick. All right, so first shot here, uh, just gonna hit probably 50% uh, lob wedge to this target. Like I said, we'll hit probably maybe four or five, just to kind of get a feel. Nope, actually just, just a tad short. I feel like these greens are really, really small, but promise I'm going to try to at least get a couple on there. All 
All right, so on that fourth shot there, you know, finally was able to get one on the green uh, after coming up short on those first three. But we kind of saw that, like, it kind of lands and then bounces forward. So, I mean, with these really small greens to get it to stay on target, you almost kind of have to hit either a lot of spin, which is kind of hard to do at this distance, or you kind of got to land it in front of that 55 yards. So two out of five on the green with the, how small those greens are isn't bad. Let's kind of take a look at the statistics real quick. All right, so like I was saying over here on the mini map, you can kind of see like where those shots landed or actually ended up because it's, it's showing you the total distance of the shot and not just the carry. So we scroll to the right. We can see that we got two to stay on the target. So two out of five, 40%. Our best shot ended up being only seven feet. And then the average proximity of all those shots was at 14 feet. And then we can also see that my average carry for all shots was right at 50 yards. All right, so let's pick something that's a little bit longer. Um, we're gonna go over here to the flag. Let's, uh, let's try to do like a pitching wedge. So we'll do this target that's 138. It's kind of an island green, but it is kind of downhill. So it is kind of sunken um, uh, 23 feet from our tee box area here. So it should be pretty close to a full pitching wedge uh, for this shot. So I'll go ahead and change the, the club here. Okay, so same thing that we did at the short target. You know, I'll try to hit four or five. Hopefully with this being an island green, hopefully I can get most of these on there. Oh, just short. Give it a little bit more on the second one here. That's out to the right. Hopefully it gets there. Nope. That should get there. And then we can kind of see on that shot, it actually, um, the ball physics look pretty good too because, you know, we hit a spin rate of, of just over 10,000 there. So you saw it kind of bounce like twice and then kind of suck back to the hole. So that was nice to see. That's out to the right. Go ball. Oh, barely made it. Oh, whoa ball. All right, so like a lot like the shot before, that one barely made it. Bounced kind of out of that fairway lie onto the green and then still kind of spun back a little bit. So one more here. That's a little thin. It's got to go. Just made it. Whoa ball. So that was five shots with the pitching wedge to this island green target. All right, so as we look at the stats for the pitching wedge here, it says target hit one out of five. So I think what that means is I think the other two kind of spun back almost into more of a fairway uh, or the fringe around the green. Uh, so it's not counting those. Um, so we just had the one that landed and, and kind of went back to about seven feet from the hole counting as a target hit there. And as we can kind of see, that best shot that I had, uh, which was like shot three, I believe, it was at seven feet and then the average proximity of 17 feet for all shots, and then the average carry number was 134. All right, and you do have a replay button over here in the bottom left-hand corner. It's kind of the middle icon, so you can replay the last shot. Unfortunately, there's no way of actually selecting a different shot that I can see to where we can actually replay a different shot than the last one. So as we can see, that one kind of ended up in the fringe after it spun back there. So now we're gonna kind of take a longer club uh, and kind of work on maybe hitting a fairway target, because uh, that's something that, a lot of other simulation softwares don't really give you is, is the ability to kind of target fairways. So we're gonna try that. So real quick, we'll go back down to the bottom left corner, click on the flag, and then we've got the options along the bottom here of the short left, left, the right, and short right. Um, so let's do the left, and I'm probably gonna just hit some of my, uh, my two hybrid um, just to work on getting it over that bunker and, and keeping it in the fairway. So we'll go ahead and change the club to two hybrid and then if you guys have seen my more recent videos where i played through the u.s open on the sgt tour um really struggle with driver i'm still kind of working on that a little bit so this two hybrid is kind of my my security blanket off the tee i would say uh so we're just going to try to maybe hit a few keep in the fairway and just kind of see what that looks like i think it's about 220 to carry that bunker so definitely the bunker, but we did not keep it in the fairway. 
so that's going to be a missed target right there. Here's shot number two. Should be a draw. There we go. Just get over the bunker. And that's kind of what I expect to see out of this. Um, I typically kind of carry it, you know, 230 to 240, somewhere in there. Uh, just depends on contact. All right, since we kind of hit a draw on the last shot, I'll try to see if I can't hit a fade. That was terrible. Really caught the top half of the ball there. So, see if I can stay down on one and see if we can still fade it. Much better. A little less distance on the fade, but still cleared the bunker. And we're in the fairway. Since I hit five shots with the other clubs, I'll hit, I'll hit one more with this. We'll see if we can't maybe hit a bigger draw with this thing. All right, so other than that one really bad shot that I hit, uh, most of those are pretty solid. So let's take a look at the stats real quick. Since our target was the fairway, uh, we actually had three of those in the fairway out of five. So that was our highest percentage uh, of all clubs we used today. And then our best shot, uh, longest shot there was 243 yards. But our average total distance was 219, and that has a lot to do with that one that I hit really poorly because I think it only went like 135 yards. All right, so real quick, we're going to kind of talk about like what I liked about it. The, the kind of the pros that I see. One, uh, right off the bat, like I've said before, I love that we've been, this device has been out for over a year now, and we're still seeing really good development and feature drops uh, from Rapsodo. I really think that they're trying to kind of catch up with what Awesome Golf is doing. I, th I still think Awesome Golf is a little bit more polished um, than, than this app is, or this target range is, but this is definitely a step in the right direction. So I do love the fact that they're giving us more practice. Um, I, I kind of hearken this is between awesome golf and probably what you see in garmin in the garmin range because the garmin has a target range as well with a bunch of greens around um actual water so yeah like i said this is a great step forward uh, i think it just needs to be tweaked a little bit just to kind of make it that much better and we'll kind of go through those things here in just a second so the first thing uh, would be like elevation a lot of these targets are kind of sunken so you're always hitting downhill that's kind of like my number one thing that i would love that they can maybe um put a toggle switch in there or give you an option to where you could basically flatten this out to where you're hitting to just level targets and they all be the same, that's fine. Or, you know, like I said, give you the option for lower, neutral, and like higher. So you could work on hitting to downhill targets, you could do neutral targets, and you could do elevated targets. My, my second is that when you select a target, you're basically just aimed directly at that. So if you wanna work on necessarily a fade or a draw or something like that, it's, it's kind of like you don't get to aim where your target line is. So I'd like to see an adjustment to where you could actually change the target aim line opposed to where the target is. So like for instance, like I've picked the, the very back target on the left side of this green in the back here. Um, now that pin is just past the water. Basically I'm gonna have to hit a big sweeping draw and I have to push it out to the right to bring it in most likely um, with the way we're lined up right now. But if they gave us the ability to actually aim our target line, I could aim out towards the right side of that green and then just kind of hit just a normal draw or kind of a baby draw just try to get back to that target a little bit better. So that's probably the second thing that I noticed, just the ability to change the target line. And then the third thing that I would mention is like on these little short greens up here at the front, these small ones, because you're not really hitting full shots, you're not being able to put a lot of spin on it. You're gonna get a lot of bounce and roll on these forward greens. So them being that small, it is gonna make it very challenging to get the ball to stay on the target. So I kind of wish either two ways they could address that is one, give us a toggle switch to where we can basically make the ball stop where it carries, and that counts as hitting the target or not. Or two, they could uh, basically get rid of all these small greens and then just give you like one long green that's kind of narrow, and then just place pins, you know, every seven or eight yards or 10 yards. And I think that would help. So yeah, those are what I see as like the three biggest improvements kind of needed. I love what they're doing. They continue to bring these updates and give us functionality even though the device has been out for as long as it has. So that's always great to see. So hopefully just make a few tweaks, make this that much better as we move forward.
uh, that is going to do it for today's video. Um, if you do like this kind of content and like this video, please make sure to give the video a like. And then if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do that. Help out the channel. Uh, we are going to be continuing to do more launch monitors and other content coming up on the channel here soon. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Y'all have a great day, and we'll see you in the next one.